Yo, 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 what's going on? It is game time tennis in the building. You are here with Coach J. And today's amazing topic is getting through the first tournament, how to get ready, what things you need, uh, and all of the above. Eating, all of those things. We're going to kind of cover those really quick. So, before we get started, um, if you have not, please like, comment, and subscribe. I am getting ready to unload a bus load of content. Uh, I have now carved out some time where I can um, give you all the things that you guys um, deserve. We're going to talk about Nick Kyrgios um, in another episode. We're going to talk about Novak, where the game of tennis is kind of going, the, the movement that it's moving in, and things of that nature. But... Like I said, please like, comment, and subscribe. If you have not, um, if you do follow me on IG, that is Game Time Tennis on IG as well as Facebook. And here um, on YouTube, it is Coach Jamel. I'm trying to decide if I want to change it to Game Time Tennis as well. It's to make it all universal and simple. Um, but without further ado, let's get started. So let's say that you have decided to sign up for your first tournament okay let's talk about where to sign up at okay there are a couple of different avenues you can sign up in um, some of your local pro shops and things of that nature your tennis centers and things have tournaments where you can literally just go in put your name on a list put a phone number and boom sign up um, when collecting data it's gotten a little bit more I guess you could say uh, internet savvy. So what you're looking at is UTR, um, which is Universal Tennis uh, Ranking, and you can sign up uh, and get a free account under UTR, and they have a list of tournaments that are being played. Oh, that's not nobody I know. They have a list of tournaments being played in a lot of different areas, and so um, you can narrow it down by state, um, also, it gives you a process where you can rank yourself. So if you haven't played any tournaments and you, you know, you've played tennis before or whatever, you can try to rank yourself. Um, but if not, those tournaments will filter you out um, within the first 10 or 15 tournaments. You can really just solidify that you're a whatever level, whether it's a one, a low one or whether it's a, you know, nine or 10. It'll happen really fast. Um, and it's just based off of the style of play that you take into those matches. If you're an aggressive player, you got some, you know, some guys that just started playing, you're probably going to see these scores looking like 6-0, 6-1, 6-2. Those rankings will start to bump up really fast because they'll start to filter you out and say, you do not belong at these low-level tournaments or at this low ranking. So UTR is a great place to do it. USTA, um, signing up for USTA account you can do the tournaments through USTA and those tournaments are amazing as well. They carry the ranking system of the UTR and they kind of filter it into it, but UTR is its own kind of separate entity. Um, and we can touch on those a little bit later, but UTR or USTA.com, uh, you can sign up for both of those. Um, I believe there's a fee for USTA that is good for a year. Um, UTR, I have not run into a fee at all. Um, and so that's always cool. And there's bus loads of tournaments, especially in the summertime, but there's tournaments all year round. So no matter where you are, um, if there's tennis to be played, there's some tournaments going on, you probably get jump into it. All right. Now, with that being said, let's say you get into, you know, you sign up through USCA or UTR. Um, you've been playing for, you know, uh, a week, hopefully not a week, but a little bit of time. You've gotten a, a decent forehand and backhand to serve. Maybe not even a volley, but the decent forehand, backhand and serve. Um, those are the things that I would tell you. If you're just starting off, you should at least have a solid forehand or backhand. Um, that's just being perfectly honest. Uh, I just trained it, been training the kid for a while, um, kind of getting him out of this mode of being fearful of playing in tournaments because honestly, people do not know what to do when they lose. And so they avoid it. 
they avoid it in so many different areas. And because of that, you got to put yourself in a position where you know what you need to improve on. I know time and time again, people are like, oh, what if I, I get destroyed? And what if you don't? <laughs> that That's uh, a thing that people really just don't understand. What if you don't? What if you do win? What if you hit one ball in? What if you hit 50 balls in? What if the person that you're playing is worse than you? Does that happen? All the time. Um, and tennis is one of those things that you bounce back. You bounce back when you lose. Um, don't let a loss determine whether you are going to be the world's greatest or the world's worst tennis player by any means. Tournaments are there to the, to tell you what things that you need to work on. It's always it's also to put you in situations that you would normally experience just playing a match with the same person 47 times in a row. Um, I know guys who only play a match and they play with one person. And it's a close match every single time. But that's all that they know is that particular player, that particular style of tennis. And so there's no growth beyond that style of tennis. You got to, if you really want to take your game to the next level, tournament play is amazing because you get to see all different styles of forehands and backhands whether they're broken and whether they're beautiful whether they don't make sense they go over and that you don't know how they went over um whether it's not traditional whether it's this big weird you know super western forehand or some off the wall thing you're gonna see it all serves too you i've seen people hit inside out serves they hit the ball like this across the ball and the ball spins that way and that's their normal serve because nobody taught him how to serve and so they just figured out something that they thought works and trust me i'm sure if if you're watching this and you've seen some weird tennis you understand some of that stuff you're like why why is that why would you do that like nobody Okay, exactly. So that's what you're going to get. You're going to get some of that weird tennis, some of the pusher tennis. The guys that start to lose, they, they just lock, they moonball everything. You're going to see all of that. You're going to see all of that. And the honest to God truth is, you will never know how to play against it and play through it and actually win those types of matches if you don't play them. So you gotta you gotta start testing your skills, man. It doesn't have to be a big tournament by any means. It can be a smaller tournament, but you gotta start testing your skills and say, hey, oh, that was cool. Then you know what you made of, man. It, it, tennis is so fun, man. It, it's don't let it be detrimental. Don't let it be one of those things that you train and you you play all day every day. And you never know what you look like compared to other people. Um, I'm in the commercial insurance world, and one of the things that, that we really push is understanding where you compare to other people. Um, a lot of times, people only want to quote your insurance. Um, my company is a little bit different. We, we look at what makes you a better risk. Uh, a lot of times, people don't just pay attention to that. They're just like, hey, look, just give me some insurance look let's make you the best risk that insurance can have let's show you different things different avenues and say hey look this is great hey look you know you shouldn't do that you don't have coverage here and if you put this policy in place you look better and those are the things that we want to do um, and it translates as well to the tennis world hey look what are the things that are risk in your game can you not hit more than four or five forehands that's risky can you not hit more than four or five backhands that's risky can you not direct the ball does it only go down the center because that's all you can hit that's risky what about your serve if i took you and let you hit 50 serves or 100 serves how many do you think you would make in 
I didn't say hit them as hard as you could. I just said, how many can you make in? Yeah, 30%. That's low. That's risky. Yeah, 50%. Mm, maybe a little hot. Maybe sun be in your eyes. Now you, you, your, your percentage is dropping to 40 or 30. Can you be the best risk and take as, as few mistakes as you can into your match? Over time, you start developing better and better habits where you don't have so many risks. Your serve is not a risk. Your forehand and backhand is not a risk. It doesn't fold under pressure. I see some guys can hit 10, 15 amazing backhands. After the first three games, they start to fold. You start to put a little bit of pressure on that backhand, and they got to hit them a little bit more consecutively. They have to hit them with a little bit more um, direction. No bueno. And you're going to find that. Even if your game has weaknesses, it doesn't mean you shouldn't play the tournament. It means you get a chance to work through it. That's it. It's working through their process. All right. Now, let's say you got forehand, backhand, sorry, volley. Your footwork looks good, you know, or decent. And you're like, you know what? I'm ready. You sign up for this tournament. What does the week before look like? One. Don't add anything to your game that's not already there. I've seen guys, I've seen terrible coaches. Oh, my gosh. Oh, man. I'm having flashbacks of some bad coaches I've seen. Try to add five and six different shots to a person's game. That they, and the shots that they've never hit and try to add it to their game the week before a tournament. Don't do that. Go into your tournament with what you have in your toolbox. That means if that's what your forehand is, we're taking that with us. If that's what your backhand is, we're taking that with us. We don't take anything that's not already what we have. Because when you try to add randomness, you get randomness as a game. You can't build any consistency and then you're all thrown off. Okay? So, take with what you have. Second, hydrate, hydrate, hydrate. In the summertime, in the fall, in the winter, whatever it is, hydrate eat properly your fruits your vegetables make sure you have enough potassium um whether you know make sure you got enough salt in your body because you work out and try to get this last minute workout and then you don't hydrate and put the proper nutrients back in your body and you look up and boom nothing it just is it's uh uh you cramp up you're like oh, i can't do this you don't want to be like that okay Load up on starches the night before. Water, starches are great because you're going to get in that first match. You're going to be a little nervous. You might not even be nervous, but you're trying to figure the game out. And you're doing extra that you don't need to do. Nobody's just super relaxed. There's very few people that's going to go in their first tournament and go, boop, 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 and not have a little bit of nerves. Nerves are good. So go into that tournament. Understand that, hey, look. I'm going to do the absolute best I can. I'm going to take what I have in my toolbox. I have enough energy to go through this match. Uh, I have a 50-50 chance to either win or a loss. And I keep it moving. That's it. All right. Last thing. After that first match, whether you win or lose, and let's say you lose. Okay. Now what? Okay. It's not over. First of all, most tournaments have more than one round, so you're going to at least play two. Um, if it's a UTR, you may play three. Uh, but know what you need to do next to be prepared to go do it again. Hey, look, man, my forehand wasn't the greatest, but you know what? Maybe I was hitting a lot of them out. Maybe let's take a little bit of pace off of it and try to add some direction. Maybe it worked on the backhand. Hey, man, I, I hit so many serves as hard as I could, and only 20% of them went in. How about we get the point started by putting the ball in play? And then let's go from there. You know, assess those things. It's not the end of the world. I've lost plenty of matches. <laughs> plenty of matches. And it all starts with just assessing what you have and moving on to the next thing. Lastly, 
Um, make sure that you get good foods. None of the extra dairy, especially in this hot sun. I'm here in Texas right now. Try to stay away from all the crazy dairies and stuff like that. And just eat good, solid food. Um, nothing that's going to make you sick. Um, and no big, heavy meals. Um, you eat those the night before the match. So if it's a two-day tournament, eat it Friday night, eat it Saturday night. Don't eat it in between the day because those heavy foods weigh down on you. All right. So that's my quick synopsis of what it looks like to go through your first tournament, what you need. Um, lastly, oh, my gosh, don't let me forget this, man. Bring extra clothes, socks, a second pair of shoes if you have them, a couple of shirts, a couple of shorts, a couple of underwear, whatever it is. If you're sweating like that. The last thing you want to do is go into your next match after you play your first one and you drenched in sweat and not being in a cool, relaxed environment and being able to go back out there refreshed. Okay? You still in this sticky, uh, nobody wants to play like that all day. No no football player plays a, a football game, doesn't take a shower and go plays another football game. That That's just weird. That just doesn't, uh... No, and I mean, let's say like in a seven on seven tournament, but even then, they got plenty of different uniforms. They're wiping off, they're relaxed, they they cool down. Get your body in a refreshing mode so you can go back out there and play another match. All right, you guys will do amazing. So whoever you are, wherever you're playing at, you will do amazing because you took the time to go out there and give it your best. Win or lose. That's amazing that you got your, you're out there pulling your strings and putting some things together and, and trying to make some things work. All right? Go out there. If this is your first tournament and you're watching this video or you've played a couple of tournaments and you still need a little bit of help, let me know how it goes, man. Leave likes, leave comments. Let me know what you think. All right? If you got any questions, leave them in a the comment. Um, this video is going out first thing tomorrow. So July the 12th um, 8 a.m you should be watching this or past in all right love y'all see y'all later